This is a video about earnings yield. Um, the idea with investing is very simple. Um, we start out with X amount of dollars, let's say a thousand dollars. And if possible, hopefully, we want to end, you know, we want to make profit. And then we want to end with our starting, inc um, starting investment and then plus the profit. So obviously, you know, you, you want to make substantial amount of profit, but then the amount of risk we take will be proportional to the profit that, or the amount of profit that we make will be proportional to the amount of risk we take. So more risk we take, more potential we have for a return. It doesn't necessarily mean that we are going to have more return because we are taking higher risk. It just you know, if we take a higher risk, we have more potential likelihood, um, well, not, not likelihood, more potential for a return. However, we also could lose significantly because we are taking too much risk. So then we will have a spectrum of investments that will offer us different levels of risk and return. So it is this profit that we are trying to figure out and then how much of a profit are we making is uh, the main question. So let's uh, go to Google and let's search for um, US Treasury um, yield. Right. These are the US Treasuries um, that are sold by the Treasury on a daily auction. And then you have different uh, maturities here, say one year, two years, three years, one month, and up to 30 years. So let's take one year um, as of, you know, this past Friday, today is a Sunday. So this past Friday, the, um, the yield was 0.12%. So on a, um, you know, on our start profit end, if we have $12 off a profit, let's see what type of a return is that we make 12% divided by 1,000, that's actually 1.2%. Whereas here, it says 0.12%. So it's not $12 that we make, it is $1.2 that we make. So we invest $1,000 and then we get back 1.2 as a profit and we also get back our um, principal and therefore we have 0.2%. 12% an actual yield. Now, what is an earnings yield for a stock? Now, for a bond, your yield is uh, fixed. It cannot go up. It cannot go down. You could lose all your money if the company goes default. However, if the company does not go default, pays, then you cannot hope to have a higher yield or you cannot hope to have a lower yield, um, you basically, you see what you get. This is why uh, the bonds, notes, bills, they're referred to as fixed uh, income securities. Your income is fixed the day that you bought it. As long as you don't speculate with it, you don't buy and sell, buy and sell, day trade. Um, you just keep it until the maturity, you're gonna be earning um, you know, the, the profit and this is the yield that you're gonna get. So with a stock, however, they're variable income instruments and you don't have a promised return. So what is an earnings yield? Okay. So let's look at Apple, you know, my lecture company, because no particular reason, just because the, the data is easy. Um, Apple has earnings per share for the trailing 12 months of 3 30. So we have the same start end, right? So this is for the bond, right? This is a bond yield. This is earnings yield for a, I want to say stock earnings yield, right? So we start with a, let's put a little bit of space in between. So we start with the same, well, this time though, we are starting with $119.02. That was the closing price on Friday. Right. And this now, we don't, let's not, let's not call it profit, let's call it earnings per share, 
right? This is how much uh, income the company has generated within the past 12 months per share, right? And it is $3.30. Now, a company may not pay all this out. In fact, off this $3.30, uh, Apple pays eight or paid in the past 82 cents off it as dividends and kept the remainder of it as retained earnings, which means that the payout was 82 cents. So this is the dividend. And then the remainder of the earnings was kept in the company as retained earnings. Right. But, you know, this is side information for today. So the, what's important is the earnings per share is $3.30. Apple worked for an entire year. They have generated, accumulated um, X number of dollars as income. And then, in fact, we could look it up. If you go to financial statements, and then look at the income statement annual. The net income is $55.2 billion. And then you divide that by the number of shares available. And then you come up with the earnings per share. Uh, that is the income per share. Now, a company doesn't have to pay out all of it. In fact, in the case of Apple, they only pay out 82 cents to shareholders. Uh, nonetheless, the income that belongs to us is $3.30. Dividend, we get it as cash, but the remainder stays in the company and that, that simply means that our share value goes up. So the $3.30 is the income per share that that's, belongs to the shareholders. So what then yield is, because we don't have like a face value for a bond, for a stock, the yield or the earnings yield then is the 330 divided by the stock price, which is 2.77%. Um, so you can compare this earnings yield to a bond yield in the sense that this is the earnings income per share that you will be earning as a shareholder of the company you may not get it necessarily as cash, but your company is earning this per share uh, or earned this per share. And this is how much you paid to become a partner. And therefore, this is the yield. Now, there's no guarantee that this yield will continue. Earnings may go down. Price may change. So let's say that come tomorrow, the price goes up to 150 and all of a sudden your yield will be lower because the earnings expectation did not change or you know come tomorrow the price went down to 100 and all of a sudden your yield is 330 because again your earnings expectation did not change so this is apple let's do another company let's say that we're you know we're talking about walmart The earnings, okay, so the stock price is 144.71, right? So 144.71, and then the earnings per share is 627, right? And the yield then will be 4.33%. So based on this simple ratio, Walmart actually offers a higher earnings yield. Let's look at Netflix just as a comparison. I'm not sure why I'm actually stuck on these three companies. It's probably the ones that I have been analyzing recently for multiple classes. So this is uh, trading now 530.79. And earnings per share is 592. And then the yield is 112. Um, and, you know, across all three, this is the lowest yield. Um, 
just want to do one more. This is Costco. And um, their stock price is 381.54. And then earnings per share is 902. And the um, yield, earnings yield, is comparable to Apple. So basically, every company will have a different yield, different earnings yield. And, you know, this is uh, commonly known as a P-E ratio, right? So if you were to simply take earnings per share and so instead of, you know, I actually divided earnings ratio or you know, earnings per share with the price, if you were to actually take the price divided by earnings ratio, that actually gives you a P-E ratio, right? So you can actually see the P-E ratio here, Costco 42.30, right, right there. So the idea behind a P-E ratio is how much of, or how much dollars do you pay? How many dollars do you pay for each dollar of future earnings, right? This is a P-E ratio. Um, how many dollars do you pay now for each dollar of future earnings? In my opinion, uh, earnings yield is a bit easier to understand. It is um, how much money do you hope to make if you were to buy the stock today? Obviously, when you buy the stock, you're buying it with future expectation. And this earnings per share is uh, trailing 12 months, meaning that this is what happened. There's a guarantee that it will continue to happen. Uh, it could go up, it could go down, it could stay the same. But your expectation is that you paid this and you're going to be getting this or more. And therefore, your expected earnings yield is this. Again, in the financial industry, uh, earnings yield is used frequently, but in the financial media, you would actually find PE uh, to be a lot more popular. Um, this actually is, you know, exactly the same thing, and they're just inverts of each other. So if I were to take, say, one divided by PE, uh, what you're looking at is the earnings yield. So it is, you know, earnings per share divided by price or price divided by earnings per share. It's the same ratio, looking at it, which one is the denominator and which one is the uh, numerator. So the earnings uh, ratio or the earnings yield uh, simply makes it comparable to other financial securities like bonds. Um, and you could also compare it to CDs, savings accounts and other, um, you know, investment vehicles. And, and that's about it. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you.